William Gatlin, uh, business address 251 East 6th Street in Los Angeles, California, uh, 90014. How long have you been an officer with the LAPD? Uh, eight years. And what is your rank? Uh, police officer two. Now, your partner on May 21, 2016 was Officer Diener, is that correct? Yes. You were wearing your body cam? On yep. May 21, 2016? Yes. When were you first assigned body cams? Um, sometime in 2015, I think. Uh, you know, I don't remember. Officer Gatlin, I'm going to show you what has been marked as Defendant's Exhibit Number 6. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go down to the second page. And this is the incident recall for the two, for you and Officer Diener for May 21, 2016, in connection with the call at the Eastern Columbia Building, 849 South Broadway. Now, Officer Diener indicated that he believed that he was driving that night. Is that your recollection as well? Uh, yes. And when Officer Diener is driving, what does that mean you're doing? Uh, it means I handle uh, the computer. Based on the incident recall, when did you arrive at the scene, you and Officer Diener? We arrived at scene, it looks like at 2224. And that is 1024? Correct. So when you arrived, do you recall whether there were any other police officers that were on the scene? I do not believe there was. Do you recall whether there was any press on the scene? I do not believe there was. Do you recall whether there was any type of public gathering at all? No. Was it relatively quiet? Uh, from my recollection, yes. Uh, did you see very many people in the lobby when you came through? Not that I remember. Okay. Um, and then tell me what you recall of this incident once you got there and you were shown to the elevator. Um, I remember we went up the elevator, um, exited the elevator, walked down the hallway until we found the unit number, uh, knocked on the door, a male answered the door. And uh, at that point, I mean, at that point, I, I really didn't know whether this guy is potentially the suspect, if this guy is involved in the altercation or who this guy was. So we kind of talked to him for a second and he advised us that the police had already been there. He had a business card from them. And we told him that we uh, still needed to step inside to check on the subject or potential victim just to make sure that she's okay and that this is uh, indeed related to the previous incident and not a new incident where the suspect had uh, potentially returned and caused uh, there's another new issue at hand so do you recall that you already knew that this had this place had there that another officer had had uh, answered the call or other officers had answered the call before you got there yes I already knew there was a previous caller. And how did you know that? Um, just kind of keeping track. When you're on the computer, you kind of are able to keep track of the calls throughout the night and where they're at and what's going on. And did you know that Officer Sines and, and Haddon had been the ones who had answered the call earlier? Mm, I, I believe so. Okay. Um, did you speak with Officer Sines or Officer Haddon before you went to the Eastern Columbia building? No. I'm going to take you down to the same exhibit. The page that's uh, bait stamp numbered LAPD 11. And I'm going to ask you, this is a TOMSG data log. Do you recognize this document? I, I've never seen this before. I've never seen one of these documents before. All right. Do you have a recollection of receiving an administrative message at 22-22-30, which would be 10-22-30, uh, 
saying uh, incident 4756 is the same incident as yours, 1A1 handled earlier. Doubt she called back, probably just delayed response. Uh, I did not recall, I do not recall getting that message. Right below it, at 222322, which is 1023 and change, um, it shows that your unit responded with Rog, in other words, Roger, to that message. Do you see that? Yes. Would that have been you that did that, or would that have been Officer Dean? Uh, probably me. Okay. And, and is that because you weren't driving and Officer Dean was? Yes. Okay. So does this refresh your recollection of what had been communicated to you and why you knew that someone had already answered this call earlier? Uh, yes. Are you familiar with the term cycle of violence? Yes. Well, typically, do you make arrests on domestic abuse calls? Um, you know, sometimes we do, and sometimes the other party is no longer at scene, and we would just take a report. Okay. Are there times where they just refuse to cooperate and you just left? Um, yeah, but, yeah, there are times like that. You were going to say, but what? I, I guess, like, the totality of the circumstance based on just because someone's uncooperative doesn't automatically mean that we'll just leave. You know, if we're, you know, observe some kind of injuries or if there's a third party witness that's cooperative that could lean in where even if the victim's uncooperative, that we would still take some sort of action. Now I'm going to ask you to turn to number 13 here. And this is the CAD summary report. What, if any, uh, involvement did you have in this? Um, so uh, I would be the one that kind of closes out the incidents on the computer. So the uh, writings over to the right of the screen would be f the how I would, what I would type into the computer to close out the call. And so you would have typed in related to previous incident, verbal argument only, checked residence? Yes. Who told you that it was a verbal argument only? Uh, based on uh, the knowledge I had of the previous call, I'm able to see potentially how they closed out the call, and I could have seen it from there. So you could have gotten this from A1A. 1A1. Uh, 1A1, yeah, their report. Officer Science and Officer Haddon and then just repeated it here? Uh, yes. Okay. Do you have any recollection of anyone in the apartment up in Penthouse 3 saying that there had been a verbal argument only? Um, not to my recollection. Well, let me just jump back to the events of uh, May 21 for a moment. Were you aware that that was the apartment of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? No. When did you first become aware of that? Uh, mm, I don't remember. Are we taking, taking months, days, hours? I think it was a couple days. And do you remember how you learned of it? Mm, no, I don't. And did you know who Johnny Depp was at that time? Uh, yeah. And were you a fan of Johnny Depp's as of May 21, 2016? Um, I guess I liked a couple of his movies. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not like rushing out to go see him or anything. I don't know. Are you a fan of Johnny Depp's today? I can remember the last movie I saw of his. Did you know who Amber Heard was as of May 21, 2016? Uh, I was aware that there was an actress by the name of Amber Heard, but I not, was not totally familiar with her or any of her any of her work. When you saw the name Amber Heard on the uh, incident recalls, did it register with you that she was an actress? No. Did you recognize Amber Heard when you came to the apartment on May 21, 2016? No. How close did you come to Amber Heard while you were in the apartment? 
Um, I'd have to say probably between 10 and 15 feet. And what was the lighting like where Amber Hoard was sitting? It's pretty uh, dim. Did you ask to see Amber Hurd's face in the light? No. Did you ask Amber Hurd whether she had any injuries? No. Did you interview any of the persons present about what had taken place earlier that night? No. Why not? Uh, because uh, I was aware that there's a previous call regarding the incident and the mail to answer the door uh, kind of made it clear to us that this is still left over from that same incident and a new incident had not occurred. So I didn't feel the need to at that time. Did you go through and search the entire apartment, including bedrooms, offices, and other areas? No. Again, why not? Uh, so same as I explained earlier, and they were all adamant that uh, her husband was no longer at scene. Did you go into any of the other adjoining apartments? No. You asked where the husband was. Why did you ask where the husband was? Uh, because in the comments of the call, it stated the uh, husband and wife were arguing. Okay. And, and it was also a domestic violence. Uh, yeah, call. it's a domestic violence call, and it wouldn't be uncommon for, you know, the male to answer the door to tell us that he's not the husband, and later it turns out that he is. So, you know, we kind of have to talk to the other party involved to make sure that that's not the male that's involved in the uh, argument. Did any of the four people that were in the apartment identify Johnny Depp as that male? No. Was there any effort by any of the people in that apartment to get you to press charges or investigate further? No. Would you say the people were reluctant to even have you come into the apartment? It felt that way. And what happened? What occurred that made it feel like that to you? That they didn't want to be. In the, they didn't want you in the apartment. Um, just the uh, the way that the uh, male was acting. The answer the door. And he kind of just said, "Oh, let me just go grab the business card from the previous call." And then even still, when we uh, had went inside, uh, it didn't seem like anybody was particularly eager to talk to us. Uh, I'm going to ask you to take a look at Exhibit 1, Defendant's Exhibit 1. <clears throat> and this is uh, the Daily Mail, Mail Online, July 3rd, 2020. And I'm going to go down to the 10th page. What, if any, evidence did you observe when you went to the penthouse on May 21, 2016, that Amber Heard and her friends were attempting to concoct an abuse hoax to set up Johnny Depp to be accused of domestic violence? None that I can recall. Uh, what, if any, evidence did you see of uh, Amber and her friends spilling wine and roughing the place up? None. And what, if any, evidence did you see that Amber and her friends were had concocted and gotten their story straight and were relaying them to you when you arrived? None. Did Amber or her friends at any time while you were at the apartment on May 21, 2016, claim that Johnny Depp had committed domestic violence of Amber? Not to me, they didn't. Did you see them do that to Officer Diener? No. What, if any, uh, efforts did Amber Heard make to come over and to show you any evidence of injuries? None. And what, if any, effort did Amber Heard or her friends make to try to show you any type of property damage? None. And what, if any, evidence do you have that Amber or her friends made placed a second call to 911? I don't have any evidence that it was one of her friends. I just know that there was a second call placed. 
Well, actually, if I can recall, I think it said that uh, her friend was on the phone with her and heard her arguing with her husband. Who said that? I believe that's what the incident recall said. Did you ever provide a sworn deposition uh, saying that you saw no evidence of a crime at the penthouse before today? No. It, are you aware of whether Officer Dean uh, provided a sworn deposition saying he saw no evidence of a crime? He has not. Uh, now, this uh, call came in at 2030, which is approximately 8.30 uh, regular time, p.m., right? Yes. Okay. Um, and then a little bit further down, just seven minutes later, comes a duplicate call that appears to come from the New York Police Department. So yes. roughly seven minutes of each other, correct? Yes. Did you see that when you were looking back at trying to look at the history? Uh, I believe I saw all of this. Did you see in any of the incident recalls or any of the documentation that you reviewed that there, the officers, Officer Science and Haddon, reported to the scene, left the scene, closed out, and then another call was made to come to 849 South Broadway. Um, yes. What did you see? The second call created was the one that we had received. And it says, at, at, this is 2209, which would be 1009, right, roughly? Yes. It says, teletype from NYPD ICAP. Female stated she was on the phone with her friend. She began screaming at her husband. Subject, Amber Heard, husband, Johnny Heard, male, 53 years old, 5'11", NFD, NFI. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. But that's New York Police Department. And back here, it says New York Police Department, correct? Correct. Okay. But after you communicated down here... on the administrative text messages, and I'm now on uh, LAPD 11. This is 2222. You now know it's the same incident as yours and 1A1 handled earlier. Doubt she called back, probably just delayed response, correct? Yeah, this is just a message from another unit. So, I mean... Uh, just because they're telling, they basically just sent me a message that it's related. You know, it it doesn't mean that it's exactly the same call. By the time you showed up at the door, penthouse three, at the Eastern Columbia building, you already knew that Officer Signs had handled this call, and you were just double checking to make sure that the perpetrator wasn't there and that everybody was okay, correct? I was aware that Officer Signs had handled a call at that location earlier, but it doesn't mean that I have to, that I treat it as if it's handled already. We still have to get there and speak to them and make that determination what, that it's not a completely new incident. Okay. And you did that, right? Yes. And you put in the system for this call. Twenty-one twenty twenty forty-six to twenty-one twenty-two. Met with Vic, checked location, verified husband left location, victim advised verbal dispute and refused to give any further information. Actually that was Haddon and Sons, right? Yeah, that wasn't me. I didn't put that in. And then what you put in, that was why I couldn't find it, you put in 2217, and I'm sure you weren't there till 301, but we talked to Officer Deeks about that. You put in related to previous incident, verbal argument only, checked residence, correct? Yes. Okay. And your putting verbal argument only was based on what you had reviewed with science and hadn't, correct? Uh, yes. I'm going to show you what has been marked as defendant's exhibit number two, uh, and it's a picture, it's a portion of a video clip from the ECD building, and it has 5-21-2016, and the time is 22-28-14. Uh, 
do you recognize the person in this picture? Yes. And who, who is in this picture? Uh, Officer Deaner. I'm going to ask you to take a look at defendant's exhibit number three, and that's uh, reflecting a video clip again, and it's dated 5-21-2016 and says 22-28-15. Um, do you recognize the person in this? Yeah, that's me and Officer Deaner. I'm going to uh, show you now the video cam footage. I've got the two uh, from yours and from Officer Deaner, so I'm going to go through and show those to you. He's hot. Burning up. Word round to Penthouse 3. Penthouse. Be advised, we're stepping on onto the Penthouse floor. So this one is the, is uh, defendant's exhibit number four. Coffee's hot. Burn it up. Word round to penthouse three. <laughs> Before we go further, can you to uh, show you now the you're putting verbing and says twenty two twenty eight fifteen. 
Um, do you recognize the person in this? Yeah, that's me and Officer Diener. I'm going to uh, show you now the video cam footage. I've got the two uh, from yours and from Officer Diener. So I'm going to go through and show those to you as well. Okay. So this one is, the, is uh, Defendant's Exhibit Number Four. <laughs> He's hot. Burn it up. Word round to Pentel 3. Pentel. Be advised, we're stepping on onto the Pentel. further can you tell whether this one is your video cam footage or it is officer Diener's uh this appears to be officer Diener's and so that's you over here yes can you tell whether it's you or officer Diener that's saying officer signs mm, I cannot tell okay how did you know that it was officer signs who'd been there uh, because I was aware which unit had responded to the call there and I knew that she was working that unit I don't know if it's related to the same call from earlier or if somebody called again. Probably. Uh, we just need to check. Do you guys know someone in New York or something? Yeah, she probably called twice. Okay. Yeah. Is, uh, can you just talk to your wife and make sure it's not, it's not my wife? Or, oh, okay. We'll whoever, different conversation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, whoever it is, you know, so we just got to check on and make sure it's uh, they're all good. I, I'll go get the business card from the cops. She's. Yeah, I don't know. Just because we got another call and we came again, we still got to make sure. Hang on a second. Now, would you say, and this is, I'll represent this as Josh Drew, and he's already provided testimony. Would you say that Josh Drew was discouraging you from even coming into the apartment uh, or seeing Amber Heard? Uh, yes. Yeah. I don't know if she called twice or, or whoever called, but we just got another notification. So. We just need to come in and make sure that everybody's okay. Yeah, okay. They're all good. Nobody yeah. else is in here. No. Okay. The the other officer came by. All right, Officer Gatlin, can you tell which one of these people is doing the talking of these three girls, women? Uh, I can't tell for certain, but it, is a, it appears to me it's the girl in the middle. That's the one that's leaning forward with the white shirt. Do you know which one of these is Amber Heard? Um, from this view, I can't tell. All right. Do you know what color hair the person that's the most forward that's in the middle has? Uh, I can't tell from this. Okay. Can you tell what color hair the woman, the furthest right is that's in front? I can't tell. It looks like her head is in a shadow. Okay. Can you tell what color hair the person that's uh, middle but in the back? No, same. Everything looks like they're, the tops of their heads are in shadows. All right. And you believe that the one to the left is Amber Heard? Um, no, I, I believe that that's the one that's doing most of the talking. I have checked the apartment and the other apartment as well. Yeah, okay. It must have been like a double call. Okay. Who's Amber? Okay. Johnny is. D did you see anybody acknowledge that they identify themselves as Amber? Uh, it looks like it was the girl sitting furthest away from me, or furthest away from the camera. Okay. And how would you describe the lighting in there? Uh, pretty dim and uh, dark. You said earlier you thought you were 10 to 15 feet away. How much would you estimate now that you are looking at this on body cam? How far away are you from the three women? I would still say it's in that range. Did you get a clear look at any of these three women? Um, I can't remember. And did you ask to have any of them come out into the lighting so that you could 
take a better look at them to see if potentially they might have injuries? No. What perception did you have about the level of cooperation of these four individuals with your answer in this call? A uh, pretty uh, low level of cooperation. Okay. Now can we uh, bring up uh, exhibit number five? It's the other video. I just want to run through both of them because there's a little bit of a different angle in the two. Now showing you de defendant's exhibit number five. And let me just stop you for a minute. Does this appear to be the video cam from your video cam? 
Uh, yes. So I'm just stopping here again um, on these three women. Uh, you had indicated before the woman that's leaning forward here that she's in the middle. Is that correct? Uh, it appears that way. And you think she's the one who did most of the talking, correct? Uh, yeah, right now she was the one talking. Okay. And you believe that Amber is the one in the back behind her? Yes. Um, are you able to see the right side of Amber's face? From this camera view, it looks like she's kind of facing uh, straight towards me. So uh, I would have been able to see the right side of her face from there. Would you have been able to see it clearly? Uh, due to the low lighting, probably not very clearly. Okay. Johnny is definitely not here. He's not here? Okay. Well, probably like two hours. While we're still there, can you tell how much hair Amber has covering the right side of her face to you, pictures? Uh, no, it looks like uh, from this camera view, most of the time, like half of her head is blocked from the uh, woman in front of her. Can you tell whether she's wearing any makeup? No. Everything about good then? All right. Thank you. Well, if you guys need anything else, just call us back. Have a good night. Do you recall looking for any injuries in the faces of the three women? Um, no. Now, uh, Officer Gatlin, do you recall seeing two dogs in the house? Yes. They were running around pretty freely? Yes. And when you say that, would you be able to, sitting here today, 
say that the person in these three photos, defendants seven, eight, and nine, is the same person that was sitting on that sofa in the back. Are you able to draw that connection? Um, no, I don't recall. Do you, do you disagree with my description of what's in this picture? No, I was stating that I didn't observe that when I was inside the apartment. Are you able to testify whether Amber Heard was the victim of domestic violence by Mr. Depp on May 21, 2016? Uh, based on our investigation, it appeared as if she was not. Your investigation of what? Based on her refusing to give uh, any statement on what had occurred. And uh, at the time, we did not observe any <clears throat> any visible or verifiable injuries to her. Anything else? Not that I can recall. Right. So did you interview any of the three other individuals in the apartment? No. Did you ask any of the individuals to give you a statement about what transpired? I believe the female that was sitting in the middle of the three uh, told us that everything was fine and that the other officers had already uh, conducted an investigation on the incident prior to our arrival. Did you ask that individual to give you a statement? Outside of that, no. Did you take that individual aside and try to interview her without the others present? No. Why not? Uh, as I just stated, uh, everybody there had told us that the uh, officers who had responded a couple hours before us had conducted the investigation. And this is, uh, our call is still stemming from that incident. And there's been there have been no change in the circumstance since then. Do you know whether Officer Science and Officer Haddon took any of the individuals aside and interviewed them? No. Did you at any point uh, ask Amber Heard to come forward and examine her in the light to see if she had any injuries? No. Did you? take a flashlight just to see if she had any visible injuries to her face or her body? No. Did you ask Amber Heard if she had any injuries? No. I'm asking whether you're in a position as a police officer to testify under oath that Johnny Depp did not commit any abuse of Amber Heard on May 21, 2016. I don't believe I'm in the position to testify whether he did or did not because I was not there when the incident potentially occurred. Okay. A and you didn't conduct your own independent investigation, correct? Outside of the female telling us that everything was fine and uh, the male answered the door, had uh, told us that the other officers had already came and talked to everybody, and uh, she told us they checked the both the two apartments. So I felt at that time sufficient that, as I stated, there's uh, no change in the circumstance from the previous call. So we did not go further into investigation. And that's the extent of your investigation, correct? Correct. Did you do that that night on May 21, 2016? Did you do anything other than what we have looked at on the video camera in connection with investigating whether Johnny Depp committed domestic violence with Amber Heard on May 21, 2016? No. Do you know whether Johnny Depp committed domestic violence of Amber Heard on May 21, 2016? No.